Once upon a time. Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Sean and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Tennille. I'm Sean. And welcome to 1979. Yeah. My goodness. Almost the end of the 70s now. Yeah, and we're we getting very close. Yes. This year starts off with Nutcracker Fantasy. From Sanrio. I was in not Japan. expecting so many Sanrio films. Yeah. I but, guess... like, I guess this was just an area, like, I just had a blind spot, too. Mm-hmm. They just, off the bat, were like, all right, we're doing animated movies now. Go. Yeah, go. Let's try a stop motion film this time. Mm hmm And if these uh, stop motion puppets look familiar, y yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they're they very, very similar to the Rankin-Bass Animagic um, production puppets that are in, like, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'd almost guarantee that this is the same studio making these puppets, but I can't confirm that because all the information I can find about like who actually made these puppets and stuff is just like not readily easy, like not very easy to find. Hmm. Which is sad because like these are some well-made puppets both in this movie and in the um in the Rankin Bass shorts. I'm surprised that there is But are they though? I mean not not every single one is a winner, but like they've got quite a bit of charm and appeal to them and they've certainly had lasting like appeal in terms of like pop culture history. I'm surprised that we just don't know anything about who made them. Uh okay. Whether you like it or not, like, whether you like the shorts or not, it is surprising that, like, there is no how they were made. Although, what isn't surprising, I guess, is that there isn't a how they were made because Rankin Bass is seen as, like, an American studio even though they outsourced all their stuff. So most people don't know that Rankin Bass stuff is outsourced and not made in America, in America at all. And it's like, oh, no, no, a lot of it is done in Japan. And actually, um, other studios that Rankin Bass have worked with was Hollis and Bachelor in England. the UK. Hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, like half a dozen different production studios in Japan, usually toy animation, but um, also Sanrio. And for the record, I know we've mentioned Rankin Bass a lot here, but Rankin Bass was not involved in this production. Yeah. But it's just, they all start bleeding together when you, like, start looking at these studios because so many of them have worked with each other and, like, Hired cross each other over. Out and stuff. Yeah. Like, it, it's just a big old blend of people. Either way, mm -hmm. this movie is a stop motion musical. Sure, that's a way to put it. It's a stop motion musical based on. The Nutcracker and The Nutcracker and the Rat King. Both okay. of which I don't know much about because Nutcracker lore, like, confuses me. Mm hmm And, uh, it's very surrealist, which everyone knows is my absolute favorite genre of storytelling. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of nice things to say about this one. I don't have a lot of nice things, but I don't have, like, anything super negative to say about this one. Like, I think this was fine. It's weird and interesting enough that I think it's worth a watch if you find that kind of thing interesting, or if you're interested in, like, Nutcracker adaptations. But, like, I don't know. This was just kind of weird and not my thing. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it was fine. Okay, well, let's get into a plot synopsis. Yes. So, there's a girl visiting her aunt and uncle in another town, and she has a fever dream where the Nutcracker doll she was given is being stolen by a terrifying two-headed rat. Whoa, 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 wait. You already missed an important subplot that goes absolutely nowhere. That's why I didn't mention it. The Ragman, Sean. They spend, like, a good five minutes at the beginning of this movie talking about 
bad children better go to sleep because if they don't go to sleep before the ragman shows up, the ragman will come and turn you into a mouse. It goes nowhere. That, and then, like, the they set this up, and, like, the ragman shows up every once in a while, but, like, this goes nowhere. <laughs> but he doesn't show up. It's just the they uncle. They tease him showing up, though. Mm hmm Yeah. But it doesn't do anything for the movie. Uh-huh. So I left it out because I don't want to talk about this movie for a crazy long period of time. It's just weird, man. Mm-hmm. Two-headed queen rat lady wants to steal her puppet, and then she wakes up, and oh, it was all a dream. Except it wasn't a dream because she actually cut herself on the glass, so she wanders into the clock where she's following her uncle, who is a clockmaker man. Who gives off bad vibes. Weird, uh, creepy, unsettling vibes. Anyway, she ends up in a kingdom of dolls. dolls By the people. way, this movie's also horrifying and definitely gave children nightmares. Uh, yeah. The Rat Queen is horrifying. The Rag Man. The Rag Man is horrifying. The way things are shot in general, it's very dark and mm -hmm. unsettling. The music can be really unsettling. Anyways, she mm -hmm. makes it to a kingdom of dolls, and the princess that she happens to look identical to has been turned into a rat and also forced to sleep forever. But not by the Rag Man. No, this is by the evil Rat Queen. Mm -hmm. Two-headed rat queen, because she wants the princess to marry her rat son, and the king is like, no. And they also had a war, but their soldiers are all wind up, so they lose because they can't keep winding up the soldiers. Mm -hmm. It's a really dumb strategy. Well, the little girl comes in, and she's able to get a super sword from a fortune teller lady and gives it to the captain of the guards who's smoking hot with his red hair. Oh, God. They have another fight with the rat. We'll, we'll get to him. We'll get to him. Uh, they have another fight with the rats. This time they win. The captain of the guard is able to slice the queen in half and also destroy the evil nut that is keeping the curse on the girl. The queen curses him to turn into a nutcracker, turning into the nutcracker doll that she had at the beginning of the movie. I don't know. <laughs> so the princess is cured, and the princess is a bit of a bitch, and she's like, ugh, dude turned into a nutcracker? I'm not gonna marry a nutcracker. So main character girl takes the doll and wanders off to figure out how to save this guy that, as soon as he walked into the room the first time, she fell in love with him instantly. Mm -hmm. Anyways, she goes to a clockmaker man and he tells her, oh, it's love. Love will cure him. And then we have like an animated sequence, like a traditionally animated sequence that's psychedelic and like a small girl and an adult man falling in love and Ugh. represented by various animals and stuff, just in love and things. Ugh. And then she's woken by the rat prince wanting to kill the nutcracker because he did bad stuff to her. And then she's like, I'll save you, and jumps in his way. And then she wakes up in her bed at her aunt and uncle's again because... It was all a fever dream. It was all, it was still just a dream. All of this was a dream. Uh -huh. Every second of this movie has been a dream. Yeah. And then she wakes up and then her, I don't know who this guy is, a friend of her parents or, or her aunt and uncle walks in the door and it's the, it's the captain of the guard and they are smitten with each other. And he's like, will you marry me? Or he implies, will you marry me type of thing. And I'm like, dude, uh, she's like eight. eight and uh, you are very clearly a young adult. Yeah. Like this is, 17 at least. This is not okay. Uh, and the movie ends. <sighs> and then don't forget, there's also this like stupid log segment in the middle of the movie where the king has like a advisors? committee advisors from like people all over the world. So we just so get, just get like a whole bunch of racist caricatures doing 
shit for like way too long. And then they just hang around in the background whenever the king's on screen. And they're all terrible. Yeah, it's, it's like mm, it's not good. It's like these border on like unpleasant to outright racist and like not okay. Yeah. It's not cool. I don't like it. I but don't no. like the pedophilia vibe. Yeah, we gotta talk about that because mm -hmm. that is the biggest nope. Like, okay, to start with, this girl at the beginning knows who this guy is. Already knows he's smoking hot and wants to, like, marry him. Yeah, but she's like a little girl, so whatever. You know, she... <laughs> The thing is, is, like, she she tells her aunt, like, she knows who he is, and, like, she's been here to visit him before. Like, they're old friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's been a couple years, so they've both grown up a bit. Yeah. But then she gets the Nutcracker doll, and it's like she forgets who he is. Mm-hmm. And then, she, like, she goes on this adventure, and then he shows back up again, and he and she's like, oh, it's you. Fritz, or whatever the hell his name right. is. Right, and it's like, but you knew him. Like, mm -hmm. you know what he looks like. Yeah, it's been a few years, but, like, there was already a, an image at the beginning of the movie where she saw, like, she was, like, thinking, and, like, in her memory, they do, like, the little, like, woo. And, like, you could see into her head, and you can see that she's thinking of the guy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what he looks like. You know it's him. What is... I that was very poorly executed. And then the fact that yeah, like, uh, probably in the original Nutcracker story because the story was written forever ago. You know, the those are the ages that the characters are. But this was a movie made in 1979. You need to change the ages of the characters so it's okay. Yeah, just. Change it. Either make them both little kids or make them both adults. Whatever. Make them similar ages. Don't make them like literally like 17 and 8. <laughs> if he has to squat to look her in the eyes, no. there is a problem here. No, 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 no. It's it's not okay. Yeah. So all that problematic stuff aside, I would still recommend this movie just on its, like, weirdness factor. And the fact that it wasn't, like, terrible, it was just not good. And, like, it's got some creepy vibes. And I always like listening to the Nutcracker Suite, even if I never understand, like, the Nutcracker musical story, whatever. I would have to disagree with you here. I think... The animation here is not worth anything. Worth putting up with. Yeah, the plot is bad. It's mm -hmm. unsettling. If you want to watch a horror film, sure, watch this. Yeah. Because it's horrific where there's, like, scary things being flung at you constantly and the main character falls in love with an adult and everyone's okay with it. <laughs> so if you want a horror film, go for it. But otherwise... I don't recommend this at all. Yeah, pretty much. <sighs> well, there's not even anything else really interested, like interesting to say about this one because there's not much information about it. Mm -hmm. um, this is the only stop motion animated film Sanrio produced for like the next 40 years, basically. Oh God, wow. So, so it didn't go well for them financially, presumably. I don't know. Well, I also don't think that this... Like, I think this is one of those things that Sanrio, like, published, but didn't necessarily produce. Oh, okay, you know? yeah. Like, I think they might have, like, outsourced this to another... A studio made it, but then they're like, we need help releasing this film. Sanrio, can you help us? And they're like, yeah. Right. The closest I could figure for the studio that actually made this movie was MOM Production, which later gets turned into Video Tokyo Production. But like, this company doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. And the only person I could find links to this company was uh, an animator named uh, Tarahito Mochinaga. And like, he's not linked to this movie at all either. So, yeah. This is an unknown movie. We also watched the English version of this. I don't know if there Re was a... It's a remaster of it. Well, yeah, we watched a remastered version of the movie. Mm-hmm. 
of the English version. Yeah. So I don't know if there was... Christopher Lloyd's in it. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee, not Christopher Lloyd. Two different Christophers. Christopher Lee, you know, Saruman, and other roles. Ansem the Wise. What? Oh yeah, Ansem the Wise from Kingdom Hearts. And he also played that one villain from that one Bond movie. Sure. The man with the golden gun. Sure. He is the man with the golden gun. Okay. Like that, I'll believe you. Sure. Anyways, <laughs> he's the uncle in this movie, and there's no reason for him to be the uncle in this movie. He's creepy. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Creepy and unsettling. I think that's going to be it for this movie, so next... What's next? Next up, we have Taro, the Dragon Boy, from Toei. So we'll see what Toei has for us this year. I think they have multiple films, but this will be the first one. Okay. On top of that, at the end of this episode, I just want to say thank you to our Patreon supporters over yeah. on Patreon.com. It's because of you guys, we can actually bring you all this awesome content. If you guys want to help support this... You can do that by going over to Patreon. The link is in the description. Uh, and for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to our Discord. You can also sign up for higher tiers and get art done by Tennille as well. Mm -hmm. And As of right now, I have upped the number of slots. commission slots I have available. I'm now taking 10 sketches, uh, 20 headshots and 15 full bodies. So those slots fill up pretty fast. So if you would like to get some art from me, be sure to check that out. Yeah. Uh, if you want to uh, help find movies for Animation Pilgrimage specifically, we have a list of the movies that are upcoming in, down below. And if you can find digital versions, you can email that to the email there, animationpilgrimage at gmail.com or also... you can mail them to us because we now have a p.o box you can mail us movies you can mail us i mean honestly whatever you want you can mm -hmm. send us fan art nice letters down in the description we also have our entire movie and game collection so you can see what that is and it also has so you don't end up sending us a duplicate of something that we already have or whatever yeah and it yep. also has our mailing information mm -hmm. and on top of that if you just want to see more of tenille and myself doing things uh we are on twitch yeah we play games i know a lot of people like to listen to animation pilgrimage in the background while they draw mm -hmm. or stuff like that so you, you know you could do that while we play video games as well yes and we open up mail on stream as well yes we'll open mail on friday streams but we stream on mondays fridays and now saturdays mm -hmm. uh, so you can see us over there and all those replays do get put on YouTube on my YouTube channel, which is Sean Flowers here on YouTube. Yeah. So those are other ways you can find out, find our awesome content. And of course, you are doing, you're part of Starcat Studios, mm -hmm. uh, working on... Call of Moon, Starkling Battles. Yes. Yeah. And so that'll be coming out later this year as well. Yeah. So keep an eye out for all of so those exciting. things. So exciting. But either way, that's it for this episode of Animation Pilgrimage, and we'll see you next week for more. Yeah, bye-bye.